Hey, 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 it's Lewis here with Lab Padre. It's really great to be back in the studio this week. I won't keep you waiting any longer, so let's dig in. In the early hours of Friday morning, Bob left Port Canaveral in support of Saturday's Cargo Dragon resupply mission to the ISS. Later that same morning, SpaceX fairing recovery vessel Doug was seen returning to port carrying both of the fairing halves from the Utilsat 10B launch. Saturday afternoon, Falcon 9 Booster B-1076 and Cargo Dragon Capsule C-211 both took to the skies for the first time as they launched from Historic Launch Complex 39A on their way to the International Space Station for the CRS-26 mission. This Dragon launch, carrying about 7,700 pounds of cargo, science and supplies, marked SpaceX's second resupply mission and fifth Dragon launch overall for this year. Early Monday morning, Doug once again made its way out of Port Canaveral, this time in preparation for the Hakuto R launch that was later postponed. At Starbase, three separate tests of the fire suppression system on the launch mount started something of an anticlimactic day as the rest of the testing never moved beyond tank farm activity. That evening, back in Florida, Doug Crosby Skipper towed Just Read the Instructions into port with B-1076 from the CRS-26 launch. The next morning, the booster was lifted off the drone ship and placed on the dock for processing to prepare for transport to SpaceX's refurbishment facilities. At Starbase Tuesday, as testing progressed at the pad, workers gathering along Highway 4 gave a clear indication of an upcoming static fire. A few minutes later, fire again roared from Booster 7. This long-duration static fire of 11 Raptors was a bit different than previous static fires. For this test, Booster 7 was fully loaded with liquid oxygen to allow SpaceX to test the autogenous pressurization systems. As part of the effort to increase efficiency and decrease weight, Super Heavy Boosters piped the unused gaseous oxygen and methane, or eulage, from the Raptors back into their respective fuel tanks to help maintain pressure as the Raptors drain the liquid propellants. SpaceX also plans to use the eulage in lieu of maneuvering thrusters. Following the static fire, flames were spotted on one of the legs on the launch mount. SpaceX quickly turned on the new FireX system, which extinguished what was most likely burning pipe insulation. Wednesday, with the latest round of testing complete, the chopsticks were lowered back to the base of the tower after a lengthy stay at the top. Late Thursday night, the Raptor installation platform was rolled under the launch mount and later, one of Booster 7's Raptors was removed. A short time later, a crane lifted the engine away and quickly replaced it with a new engine with the shielding collar already installed. Once the stand was maneuvered back into position, the top platform was raised to allow for Raptor installation. Meanwhile, a new booster transport stand was moved from the Sanchez site where it was built and driven down Highway 4 to the launch pad. Once the new Raptor was installed on Booster 7, the scissor platform on the top of the stand was lowered. A few hours later, with the stand repositioned under the launch mount, a second Raptor was removed from Booster 7 and the platform lowered again. About half an hour later, the stand was moved out from under the mount once again and the Raptor was lifted off by the crane. A short time later, as the fog thickened around the launch mount, a new Raptor was placed onto the stand. And finally, the stand was moved back into position below Booster 7 and the platform was raised to allow the new Raptor to be installed. And there you have it, another short and quick SpaceX and Starbase update by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.